Today I'd like to talk about how to lower your taxes in a business sale. So the first thing I tell you is, if you're a business owner and you're watching, there is a 99% chance that you're going to pay too much in taxes on your, on your business sale. And, uh, and time and again, I, I find this to be the case. And, and the only reason is because business owners generally will not take the time to plan early. So this video is an effort to, to reach out to you and um, share with you some options that you have to reduce the tax bite. Number one, focus on the structure of the transaction. It, will it be an asset sale versus a stock sale? Sit down with your accountant and look at various tax implications. Why is that important? For example, in a C-Corp, if the buyer wants an asset sale, you could be subject to double taxation, i.e. taxes at the corporate level, at the personal level, and depending on the state you live in, at the state level, which uh, the taxes would be so high, it would essentially negate the entire idea of the sale itself. Now, there is something called a 338 H10 election that you can talk to your accountant about that may provide some relief. If you're an S-Corp, you should have in an asset sale a tax neutral effect. However, if you've got significant, significantly depreciated assets, you could have depreciation recapture issues, which would be at an ordinary income tax rate. So this kind of stuff you want to find out long before you even go in the market. Number two, if you're doing an internal transition to employees, consider an employee stock ownership plan, also known as an ESOP. ESOPs can be very powerful, uh, and you can put a portion of your company in an ESOP. You don't have to sell the whole thing to an ESOP. But the big advantage, there are two big advantages. First, your employees buy your shares on, on a tax-deductible basis, and you get to defer capital gains as long as you are investing the proceeds in U.S. securities. So if you're buying U.S. stocks, you get to defer your capital gains, and that's pretty powerful. Number three, uh, be aware of something called purchase price allocation that you will go through in your sale. So this is the buyer and seller dance of allocating the purchase price to various asset classes within the business to minimize their tax liability. A buyer is going to want the, the maximum tax advantage, so they'll try to allocate to asset classes with uh, shorter depreciation cycles, like equipment, three to seven years. And depending on how you're structured, this could have tax implications for you. So you need to sit down with your accountant as well early on to find out how you could be impacted. Number four, installment sale. If you're selling to employees or if you're selling to a family member or managers, an installment sale can be very powerful to you because you don't pay taxes on, on the monies until you actually, actually receive the installment itself. Number five, escrows. Many buyers would demand that a uh, certain portion of the purchase price be held back or put in an escrow. To the extent this happens, you can structure your escrow in such a way that you don't pay any taxes on the escrow amount until you receive the money. Number six, there's a variety of charitable trusts and grantor trusts available to you to use as a part of sophisticated estate planning to either defer or eliminate capital gains altogether. So my advice to you is plan early, sit down with the mergers and, merger and acquisition advisor and your accountant, and to the extent that you're going to do any tax, tax type negotiation, you want to do it before you sign a letter of intent. Last thing you want to do is start doing tax planning at the closing table. Rare Brand Capital helps companies improve performance and sell for maximum value. How ready is your company to grow or to sell? Want to know how you're doing? Get your free score plus customized report in just a few minutes at no cost or obligation. Visit rarebrain.com score.